Breaking a shape up into its composite parts can make finding the center of gravity a lot easier than doing it by integration. And that's what we're going over in this video. If you find it helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So in five steps, we can find the center of gravity of an area, which is the X and Y coordinates of the center of mass of that object. And so the first one is to establish a coordinate system. The second is to break the shape into its composite shapes or parts. The third one is to find the X and Y centers of mass of each of those composite parts. And then the fourth is to find the area of each of those parts. And then five is to plug them into these equations. Now all those steps are written out down in the description. You can check that out. Um, and to start off, we are going to make our coordinate system. So it doesn't really matter where you make your coordinate system. On this one, we'll just make it like this, where this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. And then from there, all of our centers of mass will be based on this x and y axis or coordinate system. So next step is to break up our shape into um, its components. So here we have a, a, an object and without breaking this up into its composite parts, trying to integrate this object would probably be impossible because it's not really a continuous function. But if we recognize that this part is a right triangle, this part is a rectangle, and then the circle, the hole in the middle, is just a circle. So now that we've broken it up into these three separate shapes, we can find the x and y centers of mass of each one of these shapes, the triangle, the rectangle, and the circle. And that's what x and y tilde are, is the x and y centers of mass, or their coordinates of each of these shapes. So and the way you find it is, here's a few examples, but you can find these often in your book, in your textbook, or looking them up online. But here are a few simple ones. Sometimes the center of mass is intuitive, like with a rectangle or a circle, but sometimes it's not as intuitive, like with a semicircle and a right triangle. So here we have labeled the center of mass C, or the centroid of each of these objects. And knowing that, we can find the center mass of our right triangle here, which is going to be one third along this way and one third along this way away from the right um, angle corner of that. And we don't actually have dimensions with this, but this coordinate would be some x tilde come y tilde. So that would be your coordinates of the center of mass of that triangle. And again, that's based on this coordinate system that we set up in the beginning. So you'd find that for each of our shapes. And then once you did that, you would find the area of each one of these shapes. Now, with our hole in the middle, the area for this circle is going to count as negative area because it is a hole. But you will still need to find its x and y coordinates for its centers of mass for its center of mass, as well as its area. So once we, I would recommend listing out all the X and Y coordinates of each um, component, and then listing out the areas of each component. And then from there, with the fifth step, we can plug them into these equations, where for X bar, it's going to be the center of mass of the object, of the um, smaller component part, the object multiplied by the area of that component part and then added to all the rest of the um, centers of mass, y, x centers of mass times by the areas of those shapes, all added together and then divided by the sum of all the areas. And then it's pretty much the same with y bar. And now I've listed z bar as well because it just kind of depends on how you set up your coordinate system, you could have this be the z-axis and this be the y-axis, 
or these principles also apply to three-dimensional objects. And so with that being said, we can plug those into our equations and find our coordinates x bar and y bar that are based on the coordinate system we set up in the beginning. Now something else to consider is that if we were to take away this, um, the triangle part of the shape, this object would be symmetrical about its center. And if an object is symmetrical, you know that the centroid is going to lie somewhere along that axis of symmetry. And so that center of mass would lie somewhere along the middle of this object if we took off this triangle. And of course, that's only true if the object is of constant density. So once again, I've gotten all the steps written out in a little bit more detail down in the description. You can check that out if you have any questions or suggestions. Leave them down in the comments and I'll reply to them. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button. If you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering. And my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.